for lack of a better word, is good. Read it right. Read works. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 23 of Let's Play Wall Street Raider. I'm Rakem, your host. Last time out, we had a big crash right at the end. We went from over $100 trillion in net worth down to 72. And uh, all that was due to a merger that we um, that we conducted between Rakem Insurance and Aflac. We uh, bought a bunch of bonds with the interest rate this high. Bonds pr bond prices are really low and the yields are high. So we bought a bunch of bonds, gave them to Aflac, and then merged them into Rakem Insurance. So his price went from $35 a share down to 27 and a half. And we can take advantage of this uh, a couple of ways, hopefully. Uh, the first way is to buy index futures with the index this low. And we know that Rakem Insurance income is going to go up thanks to all that bond income. And it's the middle of the month. So at the end of the month, the analysts will reevaluate what they think his stock price is worth or what his stock is worth based on the uh, income projection. And at that point, the stock price should re should recover. So what we want to do is we want to buy index futures everywhere that we can. And if we can find a counterparty that can afford it, we want to buy uh, stock in or excuse me, uh, call options. We want to buy call options on Rakem and we can also sell puts if we can find counterparties. Now, the only one I think that's big enough to uh, do that is Gold Corp. Because out of the top 18 companies, we own 14 of them. Gold Corp is big enough, and with only $800 billion in value on Petroleo Basiliero, I don't know, I don't think we can buy calls and have him be a counterparty, but we might be able to sell puts and have him be a counterparty. So, Hagemeyer, we had him sell off his gold right at the end, so he's got a, of last episode, so he's got a bunch of cash to work with. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to buy calls on Rakem Insurance, and see if we can get a counterparty. Now the price here is going to be probably pretty important. I think I'm going to start out at $29 a share. And I want to make it as far out as I can. And we, we can always pull it back based on the price. Let's see, let's make it one year. Let's make it one year. So it's August now, so let's make it uh, September. We might be able to get 2% possibly. Try 2%. Total's going to be this. All right, no counterparty. Let's try it again. Let's make it 30 for a year out. I guess that's not really going to make enough difference. Let's make it for uh, May next year and try 2%. All right, Gold Corp was able to do that. All right, let's try again, see if Petroleo Brasileiro will act as a counterparty. Again, we're gonna use 30, and we'll make it for May. And we're just gonna do 1% this time. All right, nobody can do that. Let's try selling puts. And this time we want to, um, let's see, selling puts. I'm, I'm selling someone the right to sell me the stock at a certain price. So if the price goes up, they can sell it to me for less than the current price. And I make a profit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it 30. Wow, these are more expensive. Of course, they're paying me in advance. Let's try... Hmm. I, don't, I don't think we're going to find a counterparty for this much. Let's make it uh, September of next year, like we did with the others. Okay, we can't afford that. All right, so uh, that's it for options. So I guess now what we need to do is we need to buy index futures. And we want to kind of spread it around a little bit. We want to start with our lowest valued company on this list is affected by the income from 
index futures. So that's going to be the insurance companies and Nomura. So Progressive is on the, the, the lowest one on this totem pole. So we're going to start with him and we're going to basically buy uh, index futures until either one of two things happens. Either he runs out of money or uh, the number of counterparties, the contract starts to decline where we need to start getting uh, contracts for the rest of these guys above. All right, so if as soon as we, I mean, we're going to have to buy these 100 contracts at a time. So as soon as the uh, counterparties start coming back at less than 100, or when Progressive starts running out of cash, uh, that's where we'll stop and we'll move on to Nomura. All right, so I'm going to fast forward while I have him buy index futures, and I will be right back. All right, we've got Progressive loaded up with a bunch of uh, index futures. He used up all of his cash that he originally had, but then he earned some. He's already making billions of dollars on each one of these. So um, I kept going anyway, uh, using up all the cash that we were earning, and now we're getting fewer than 100 contracts per transaction. So it's time to move on to Nomura. Nomura has 35 trillion, or excuse me, billion to work with. So we're going to have him buy index futures and uh, basically I want to use up all of his cash. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to, um, it may, or it may take too long to do that. So if we start getting uh, counter offers in the neighborhood of 25 contracts per transaction, then uh, we'll quit at that point and move on to, I think it's Mitsui Marine and Fire is the next one. All right, Nomira has, uh, I guess, 30 billion. He's breaking even, more or less. Um, and we borrowed a little bit of money, not a lot, in order to uh, do those last few. But I'm entirely confident that this is going to go up. We're at August 24th now, and we need to get some over at the insurance companies. Let's see which one is the smaller of the two. Um, so Mitsui Marine and Fire is next. And he's got all kinds of money. There's no way we're going to be able to put all of this into index futures, but we're going to do our best. Probably just keep buying and buying until we hit August 31st. Um, I'll fast forward while I'm doing that, and then we're going to be talking about um, working our legacy stocks and also what might happen with the interest rate. So I'll be right back. All right, it's August 29th and the contracts are coming back or the transactions are coming back at just 10 uh, contracts per. So we're going to stop here. We got almost 40 billion worth. Um, of course, that's 1 20th of the total notional value. So as you can see, we got plenty in terms of cash uh, tied up in this. Potentially multiply this 40 billion times 20. And uh, that's going to have to suffice. All right. So uh, what we're going to do at this point is we, before we start working our stocks, is we still need to do some more work over at the bank. The interest rate is super high, super, super high, which means default rates on mortgages 
uh, is high and we also have a rather small loan portfolio considering we own like 80% of the loans in the game. And most of the reason why this is is because of two reasons. One, because we have a lot of companies frozen. I'd say about a third of the companies in our portfolio are frozen. But then also we have made a bunch of trades that kind of went sour on us. And so they have a lot of cash. There's very few companies in the game with bad credit. So if we go over to the database search, and we just uncheck these, there's 928 companies in the game. And if we go to credit rating, 703 of them have a good credit rating of BBB or better. So that's a significant chunk of the market is in good credit. And that's highly unusual for games that I play. Typically, the number of companies that have good credit or better is somewhere in like the 250 company range. Okay, and mostly that's because I take a lot of money away from them through commodities, but we haven't really been doing much with commodities. So what we wanna do with the interest rate this high is we want the bank to unfreeze everyone. Let them borrow as much as they want. Let them wreck the industries as much as they want. And when the interest rate goes down, that's when we need to put a freeze on them. We want them to basically borrow, 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 and then be stuck paying off that debt for as long as possible. All right, so what we're gonna do is, first of all, we are going to um, buy all of the business loans that we don't own except for our, com our computer player. Uh, so yes, and uh, sure, my credit rating's fine. So all of these loans, except for IDT10, or ID10T, I mean, we're gonna buy everybody's loans except for our competitor, our computer player, buy all these up, and then we're gonna unfreeze everyone except the companies that the computer player controls. All right, so I'm gonna fast forward while I buy all of these, and then I will fast forward while I unfreeze everyone. And uh, the only other thing that I might do if, uh, if uh, I'll interrupt this process if we get, if one thing happens, if we get an easing policy. And the reason why is because uh, we're probably gonna be doing some interest rate swaps if we get an easing policy. And it's highly probable with the um, new era of plenty scenario now in in effect all right so i'm going to start buying these and i will be back Okay, we've had Rakem Bank buy all of the uh, outstanding loans from all the banks that had a BBB credit rating or worse. But it's September 1st now, and I wanna go over to Rakem Insurance and see what his projection is. It's for 33 cents a share, which is way up. He's still rated to hold. His management has fallen to reasonably competent from uh, very capable. So let's uh, increase his R&D to 4%. I think it's at 3% now. So we'll see what happens with that. Now with the bank, looks like his share price is down from 27 to 26.68, but our index has been slowly going up. It went all the way up to 13.8 and is still inching upwards. So anyway, what we wanna do with the bank is we wanna unfreeze all of the loans and we want to increase our bad debt reserve. Uh, and the reason for that is we now have all these bonds. We're making about $100 billion a quarter. I don't want that extra income to go on this year's, um, this year's earnings report. So I want to go ahead and take that $100 billion and add it to our bad debt reserve. And uh, I don't remember exactly. Oh, yeah, decrease income earnings right here. Okay, so... 
It's saying that I'm allowed to do that up to really only only eight billion. That's all I can do. Well, that's too bad. Let's just do the max. And uh, that's unfortunate. But anyway, uh, so I guess what we need to do now is we need to unfreeze everybody. All right, so all these all these loans that we have frozen, we want them to borrow, borrow, borrow. While the interest rates are high, we won't worry about making money off of our companies. We'll just let all of the industries deteriorate. And then when uh, the credit ratings, all, the, all these companies decline, that's when we'll worry about growing. All right, so I'm going to unfreeze everybody and I'll be right back. Well, I'm not done unfreezing everyone, but I've unfrozen about half. But we just got an easing policy. Easing. And I don't know if you were paying attention, but the short bond just took a drastic drop. So if we take a look at it, it was up at 9% and now it's down to 6.31. And if you'll notice, the short bond is highly um, influenced by the current interest rate policy. So when there is a change, it drastically drops or drastically rises. Now, what we're doing with um, our companies and everything is going to have a dramatic effect on the stock index. And there is a mechanism that works behind the scenes that basically acts like a, a restrictor plate racing kind of situation where if Companies grow faster uh, than I think it's three percent, might be two and a half. If they grow faster than two and a half to three percent per year, uh, the game behind the scenes will raise the interest rate. So that is part of the reason why I suffer from high interest rates in pretty much every game that I play. If you watched um, the Let's Play that I did on version 7.6, we had a period of six or seven years where the interest rate stayed above 9%. And matter of fact, I think it was above 10% for the majority of that time. So now that this has dropped, we are in a prime situation for conducting uh, interest rate swaps. Okay. And uh, what I would like to do is have the bank do some, have all of the insurance companies do some, and um, we're going to base it off of the short bond because we have the greatest potential to make money off of that one. All right, so um, I will go back and unfreeze the rest of the loans when I get done entering these interest rate swaps. But I want to get these done just in case. Uh, what just happened? Uh, okay. I clicked something I didn't mean to. So if we go to interest rate swaps, what we're going to do is we're going to base it off the short term government bond. And we want to do a short position because we want to pay this rate and receive whatever the rate is when it goes up. We're going to make it for, let's see, we're in September right now. So we're in the third quarter. We want to make it a minimum of three months out. Let's make it for the second quarter of 2022. And we'll have it go through the end of 2026. So that's going to be three and a half years, I guess. Is that right? Three and a half years. 
It's not going to start till June. No, it's going to start in March. That's fine. That's fine. All right. So uh, with the interest rate at this point, we'll make an offer. All right. And they didn't do a counter offer. They're just accepting it at that rate. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through and do as many of these as we can. Uh, let's see. How many should we do? Let's see. We got bank is worth about five trillion. Let's do, uh, let's see, how many do we want to do? We want to do, I guess, about 100 each. Is that right? About 100 each. Let's start with 20 and see, 20 each, and see what we get as far as counterparties. Because at 500 billion is the uh, notional amount, we may run out of counterparties. So I'm going to start with 20 each, and then I'll be back. All right, so all of our insurance companies have 20 swaps and the bank has 20 swaps. So we've got 100 swaps all together. Uh, let me make sure that I did progressive. Oh, okay, so we still need to do progressive. All right, let me do progressive. I'll be right back. With Progressive, we ran out of counterparties at 500 billion. So I just did the last three for 400 billion each. So we now have uh, 101 swaps in place, most of them for 500 billion, three for 400 billion. Our index has dropped. Gold has gone all the way up to 2000 and is now backtracking. So I'm going to sell that short. Silver is up, so we should probably have Nomura sell his and buy more of the index. And uh, crude is up, but it's a little high to buy it now. So I'm going to buy, um, I'm going to have, let's see, what, what is silver doing? It went up above 20 and now it's coming down. Uh, let's go to Nomura, see what his profit would be if we took it now. Go to commodities. 70 billion. Alright, let's go ahead and sell that off. And let's buy more of the index. But first I'm gonna sell short gold. Well, I wasn't quick enough. The price of gold is already down to uh, 1500 down 400 points in just one day. So my Cotango uh, price is just terrible. It's down to 1900 and change. So since the index seems to be on the way back up, I'm just going to go over to Namira, have him buy some more index futures. Um, probably won't get much in the way of counterparties doing a lot of contracts. So I don't expect this to take long. I'll fast forward and I'll be right back. We can't even find counterparties that can do five contracts at a time. So we're going to quit here, which is really unfortunate. Um, I'd like to put this money to work somewhere, but gold kind of shot up overnight. Uh, silver looks like it's heading down. And uh, gold is just kind of, I don't know if it's going to head down further or not. So I guess we're just going to hang on to this cash for the, for the time being. 
we may be able to buy some competitors if their prices come down. Okay, so we've done a bunch of batch processing here, buying a bunch of stuff, and um, um, I know that's kind of boring to watch, but we need to take advantage of these uh, this situation. Rakem Insurance is down some more. I wonder if Hagemeyer can buy another another um, option on it. He's got 90 billion, and that option is only worth 65. Let's uh, see if we can buy another option on it. Let's make it for 26. Nope, nobody can afford it. And if we try selling puts at 25, let's say, I don't have sufficient credit to do that either. Which is weird because we've got lots of credit. We only have 141 billion in credit. We have more than that. Where's, let's go over to the bank and check what's going on here. His total loan portfolios is like 16 trillion. So why isn't why isn't his credit credit uh, higher? I'm not sure why that is. Boy, he's trading low. He'll be declaring his earnings here in just a minute on October the 4th. And they're supposed to be way, way up. All right, so our short bond has gotten down to 6.19. And if it falls below 6%, we'll do another 10 swaps at each of our insurance companies in the bank. But until then, it's time for us to start walking or working our stocks. Uh, beginning with HeartMax. Now my intention originally was to buy uh, oil futures, but it's already risen. We've messed with the index for a month now, and um, it's already up. So I'm going to get rid of that. But we do have some more stocks that we can sell short in his industry. I don't have everyone here shorted. Uh, I think ConocoPhillips is one that I don't have shorted. Mobile, I don't have shorted. So I want to sell short. Uh, the rest of these, even with the oil price going up, um, we are going to uh, take this industry down in terms of their earnings. And uh, with the uh, demand growing negative, if the oil price will stay low, uh, that will help us out. But it doesn't really matter. We're going to be we're going to be taking this industry down anyway. We're going to throw more and more money in here as we need to to. Uh, diminish the returns in here. Um, so what we want to do is we want to have Hagemeyer sell put or buy puts on mobile and Phillips Petroleum. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. That's Mobile and Phillips. Let's go and see if there's any others we want to sell short by buying puts. So Elf Aquitaine, Petrofina. Let's see how big Elf Aquitaine is. 55 billion. All right, so let's go over to Hagemeyer and buy puts on Elf Aquitaine and then Petrofina. The index is down is back up again, but the price of Rakem Insurance is down another dollar and a half. So since Hagemeyer can't afford to sell puts on him, I think I'm gonna try it. Alright. Uh, so 
our interest rate on the short bond, the, return, the yield has gotten down to 5.72. So I want to do another 10 transactions, another 10 interest rate swaps at each of the insurance companies and the bank. Um, I'm still going to set them for second quarter of 2022 through the fourth quarter of 2026. I'll input those and I'll be right back. Okay, the index is up, gold is down, crude is flat, the interest rate is coming down, and if our short bond yield goes down to 5.3, we'll do another set of swaps. Uh, silver is up, and our GDP has grown by a full percentage point. So, what I'm expecting to happen is over the next six months, is for the stock index to rise up to about 20,000. It'll do it slowly, and then also there should be a couple of spurts. Um, so what we need to do is we need to go back over to the bank and finish unfreezing everyone and then we need to work our stocks, lower the growth rates down to zero or one percent for each of them and just let all the rest of the stocks in the market borrow, borrow, borrow and then when the uh, boom is over and the interest rate goes back up, we'll mop up when the prices of the uh, competitors come down. All right, so I'm going to go to the bank now and just return to unfreezing everyone. I'll fast forward while I do that and be back in a minute or less. We now have everyone unfrozen except for the companies that are controlled by the computer player. It's October the 3rd and Rakem Bank declares his earnings tomorrow. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start working our stocks. Now when I looked at the um, all these industries and made all, all of my notes, our interest rate policy was neutral and obviously the interest rate was much higher. so. In some cases, in a lot of cases, we had a lot of uh, stocks that were well priced to where we could buy them and merge them in. But with the interest rate falling, that may no longer be the case. So we're gonna have to look at each one of these individually and decide whether or not we wanna buy uh, the competitors if they're still well priced or not. All right, but um, first of all, we wanna go to Cabot. He is owned by Tokyo. And what we did was we had Itochu enter this industry. Or no, we, I'm sorry. That's what we want to do. But Cabot is a little bit too high priced to do that. So what we want to do is we want to have Itochu buy some assets away from Cabot. And um, we can either sell Cabot off or we can merge the two together once Cabot's price comes down. All right, um, so we are going to do that by going over to Itochu. He has $40 billion, so let's buy $30 billion worth of Cabot's assets. Oh, first we have to get rid of the assets he has already because he's in the bookstores industry. We got to get rid of that. 
He doesn't have any tax loss carryovers to worry about. So, he don't own his own, so Mitsubishi? All right, here's the earnings report for the bank. He made $60 billion. Increased his bad debt reserve by $25 billion. Let's get this transaction done and then we'll go over and take a look at him. Mitsubishi. He's got stock and subsidiaries. Uh, but those are fine. They're both pretty small. So uh, let's see. Who do we want to have buy it? Um, let's have Mut Mitsui Marine and Fire buy Mitsubishi. Because Mitsui Marine and Fire has a lot of cash. All right, Mitsui Marine and Fire can make a bunch of money by buying these bonds back. Now let's have him buy Itochu's assets. All right, not really concerned with growing. So we'll just leave all of his management settings right where they are for now. Let's go over to Itochu. Have him buy 30 billion worth of assets from Cabot. Here we are. All right, so let's grow at 8%. Reasonably competent, we'll send our R&D to 8. We'll give them an 82 cent dividend. Now, I want um, Raycom Insurance to start benefiting from the uh, rise in net worth for Itochu because he's got options, I think, that are about to go way up in value. So I'm going to have, while, while Itochu is underpriced, I'm going to have Raycom Insurance buy it away from me. And since we're eventually going to either merge uh, in Itochu with Cabot or whatever, I'm going to have Raycom Insurance give this to Tokyo. And uh, we need to increase Cabot's R&D according to my notes. IR to increase, but we I guess we can lower it because he's very capable. All right, so let's lower this to six uh, percent. Tokyo's earnings are down, but they're about to go up. And uh, we saw Mitsui's earnings report came up just a second ago, but I skipped through it. Let's go take a look at that. Earned 90 cents, so his earnings were down too, and uh, they're going up though. They're going up. Doesn't say what he made off of the index. Let's take a look. He's up quite a bit. Half a billion on every one of those. Tokyo. Even Tokyo doesn't have any futures. We didn't give Tokyo any index futures. Oh, that's right, because it started it was, it was uh, too too few contracts. Not about that. Is he the only one? Raycom Insurance doesn't have any either. Alright, gold doesn't seem to be going anywhere, so I'm going to go ahead and cover my futures of gold. Uh, let me clear these out and I'll be right back. And I'm back. So even though we're 40 minutes into the video, I've actually played two and a half hours of game time. Um, 
Um, when I finished selling off my gold, I went ahead and called it a day yesterday. I came back today and loaded up the game and um, cut together all the video from yesterday to find out how much time I had left in the episode. And uh, we're doing fine on time, but I'm looking at these numbers and uh, I'm kind of concerned. We have an easing policy, yet our prime rate is only down half a percent. And the projection on Rakem is for 25 cents for this quarter, which is half of what he has been making or made uh, last year. And so I'm concerned that uh, Rakem Insurance is about to have a drop in stock price, which will also drop the index. And uh, I don't really know what's going to happen in terms of uh, uh, recovery. You know, like when is that going to, when are we going to make that back? And uh, if the interest rate doesn't play ball here, if it doesn't like uh, drop like we expected it to, um, it may be a while before that happens. So I'm thinking that it's probably time to uh, be a little bit conservative and cover our our options on Rakem Insurance because we can make a profit on it right now. And we need to figure out what the uh, what the what the sale price is for the index because if that goes down as well, that's going to mess us up quite a bit. So we bought most of our futures on the index when it was at 13,700. And if we do a conservative estimate of a 20% increase, our sale price minimum would be 16,440. But if the stock price of Rakem Insurance goes down any further and it's red, which means it probably is going to, it's probably gonna drop. So I think we need to sell off our options and cover our options on um, rake of insurance and then we probably need to cover our short positions on the index as well and uh, see what happens with the interest rate the short bond yield has gone down some more so we could do some more swaps well let's start with these uh, with these options the Hagemeyer has call options on rake of insurance here they are right here. We can make a profit on them right now. 21 billion. Here's the earnings for Progressive. Now if I go to me, I need to cover my put options on Rakem Insurance. Uh, I sold put options, so I've got to buy them back. Now I'm going to have a gain. So here's his report. So he made 25 cents, whereas last year he was making 48. And his stock price dropped from 29.22 to 28.86. And then it just went up. That doesn't make sense. So let's see what he's projected for. 30 cents. And yet he's rated a strong sell. value of our stocks is way up. DMFI is up to 32 trillion now in value. We're almost at our goal. And he's rated a strong sell. I think I'm going to be conservative and just go ahead and sell off all of our index futures. I don't know what that's going to do. I want to take the profit we can have now. I, I just, I feel like it's risky to stay in those. We'll see what happens. As we sell these off, this is going to change. And our short bond is down to 558. So we need to do some more swaps if we can once we cover these. So I'm just going to cover all of these and uh, I'll be back in just a minute.
I don't know, maybe I'm just being a pansy, but the index is just kind of staying put there at 16, and I just would rather take a small win than a loss, any kind of loss. All right, so our bond, our short bond, has dropped to 5.58. I want to go over to the bank and see what um, interest rate we based our interest rate swaps on. We started at 6.30 and we got down to 5.72. I think what we want to do is we want to have the bank do um, a whole bunch more swaps. And uh, basically the reason why I want the bank to do it is I want him to have more money. We need him to, uh, to build up some more. He needs to be a major factor. I want him to have at least $10 trillion in net worth. And the interest rate swaps are the quickest way to do it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fast forward while I put in as many swaps as I can. I'm going to have these start in uh, the same quarter, second quarter of 2022. And uh, they'll end in the first quarter of 2027. All right, so I'm going to put all of these in. I will just keep lowering the uh, notional amount until we run out of counterparties. Um, I'd like to get 600 of them if I can. This is going to take a while, but I will fast forward so that it takes up less than a minute of your time. And I'll be right back. Just want to interrupt for a second here. The price of crude went all the way up to 149 and now it's backtracking in a hurry. And ordinarily I would go ahead and sell it short, but we stand to make more money off of the swaps than we do off of crude. So I'm going to keep doing our, uh, our in interest rate swaps and the short bond has gone up from 5.58 to 5.72. So I'm not sure exactly how many of these we're going to get, but I've got to get them now while the iron's hot. So I'm going to keep uh, doing interest rate swaps and I'll be back in just a second. What took you a minute to watch took me about an hour to put in. If we go to who owns what and we go to interest rate swaps, we should be up to nearly a thousand now. I'm just going to count them real quick. 710. So I could keep going, but we're already down to the 25 billion level. So I'm going to leave it at that and oil is all the way down to 47. So I'm going to have a bunch of our companies buy physical oil. I'd like to buy futures too, but we're going to be limited on the number of contracts. So after we get done buying um, physical oil, we'll have HeartMax get some contracts. And um, our interest rate is pretty much flat. This went up to uh, 6%, then back down. Now it's at 5.64. Um, nothing we can do about it. Our contracts don't, you know, our swaps don't start until the second quarter of next year. So as long as, as long as it goes up between now and then, it's fine. So let's get ourselves some oil. Let's see who has the most cash. Um, starting with Nomura, I guess. And we will just go down and have people who have cash buy it. Now we're probably going to have to sell some mortgages if we do more than uh, four companies buying the full amount. And I think we're going to. So we'll have to go to the bank and uh, sell off some of his mortgages. Um, I'll just do that while I'm fast forwarding and I'll be right back.
Right, I think everybody's used up their excess cash except for me, so I'm going to buy physical crude also. And also futures, because Part Max couldn't afford them. Alright, we're having trouble finding counterparties for any, for any significant amount. Let's just go over to the bank and make sure he's got cash on hand. And he's negative. So let's sell off a trillion dollars worth of mortgages. Our interest rate still hasn't fallen. And we don't have the money to deal with any more commodities. We've pretty much maxed out. So I guess we're ready to run our stocks. We don't have much time left in this episode to do that, but we will get started and hopefully between now and the second quarter of 2022, get all of these uh, situated. So the next one to look at is Toyota. His uh, earnings are flat, but going up looks like 280. So just, I guess, really just flat. He's very capable. We're only growing at 1% because we unfroze everybody and they're growing like gangbusters. And this one looks like it's actually not gonna get, not, not gonna get destroyed because these top ones don't have enough credit to destroy it. So we just gotta hang on while they borrow, 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 and then we'll be fine. So I don't see anything that needs to be changed here. We've got a 2% dividend and we're low on cash, but only because we just bought physical oil. So I think we'll leave, we're already making a profit. So I think we'll leave the uh, dividend just, just where it is. So there's nothing really we need to do for him. Let's go over to LinkedIn. LinkedIn has earnings that are up and are going up. He's reasonably competent where he was very capable. We've got some excess cash. We're trading at double our price. We're growing too much. Let's lower our growth rate to 1% because these guys are just going to expand like crazy. So let's lower this growth rate to 1%, increase our R&D to 10%. And our dividend will increase it to 2% or $1.50. And since Hagemeyer is in the same industry, let's look at him next. He's low on cash. His earnings are going down. He's very incompetent, which is why we're spending 25%. Let's look at our, uh, we're only low on cash because of this and we've got a big profit we can make, but it's still going up. So we'll hang on to it. And our options, flat on a tochu and losing money on all the oil stocks because the price went up. So we need to expand more here, but uh, HeartMax, is the one that has to do the expanding. So let's look at HeartMax next. I know we looked at them early in this episode, but let's look at them again. We got a huge loan because we just bought a bunch of oil. Expanding at 30% and the demand growth rate is zero. So all we have to do basically is just hang on. These stock prices will come down. Um, they should already be coming down. You can snap up uh, Burlington Resources here. But uh, I don't think we need to bother just yet. I think we need to wait. I think we need to wait until the interest rate swaps kick in. Let's just make money off of our futures off the oil and then we'll worry about expanding 
Okay, so LinkedIn is done. Nomura is next. His income is uh, down from last year, but on the way up. Probably because of all the money we made off of uh, the index a little while ago. We bought oil, it's already up 90 billion. All right, here everybody's expanding. They've got good credit. Let's lower our growth rate to 1%, increase our dividend to 2%. And as far as the R&D goes, R&D, we are very capable, so we'll lower it to six. That looks good to me. We'll just let these guys use up their cash and their credit, and then we'll come back strong. There's a lot of these guys are going to lose money to us on the swaps. At least we hope they will. Look at that. Our interest rate's up, as is the yield on the short bond. So we probably had a uh, change in policy. Nope, it's still easing. I would have expected that to say neutral. All right, so Namira is done. Let's go to United Technologies. His income is up but declining. He's very capable, has a 29% market share. Uh, we bought a bunch of oil, so he's got some debt. Going at 1% and a good return. So let's just increase our dividend to 2% guys none of these guys have a lot of credit left so they're not really going to harm our our uh, returns all right so uh, let's just increase our dividend Dayton Hudson is next his income is down and still going down he's got some cash he's very capable here we're growing at 1%. We've got a great return. These guys, most of them have credit, and so they're growing at crazy rates. So let's just lower our R&D to 6% and increase our dividend to 2% or 80 cents. All right, Alpha Industries. Income here is going down reasonably competent. Uh, we've got a little bit of debt, not enough to pay it off. We're only at 8%. And this guy is killing it. Let's increase our R&D to 10%, lower our growth rate to 1%, and give ourselves a 40 cent dividend. Okay, Fujitsu is next. Boy, that's a big jump. All right, Fujitsu. His earnings are going down. We'll make 460 in the coming year if this holds. Reasonably competent, spending 8% on R&D. We've got cash to work with. And we picked up Citigroup here. He's trading at a really high price, but he's not worth that much money. And he's got tax loss carryovers of $266 billion. So what we want to do is we want to buy Citigroup, have Fujitsu buy Citigroup and merge him in, take advantage of all those tax loss carryovers. Now Fujitsu has the tax loss carryovers that he can use to shelter his income. Returns here are pretty good. We're growing at the industry norm. All these guys are growing negative for some reason. And uh, Lenovo has a lot of credit, so he's just killing it. So 
I think what we want to do is just leave this alone. I think it's all fine. We'll continue to grow, and if he doesn't slow down, we can reduce this. Um, I don't really want to put more R&D out there because our return is okay right now, and if we bring this up, it's just going to go down. So if our return drops to 20, we'll increase our R&D, but until then, I think we'll just leave it where it is. Okay, so these three are, or these two are done. And he's actually gone. Well, Real Networks is next. There he is. Income is up, way up. All right, so he's very capable, so we can lower our R&D. Uh, we're in debt because we bought oil. Going at zero. All right, let's change growth rate to 1%, R&D to 6%, and let's give ourselves a 2% dividend, which would be $3 a share. Now, when I looked at this industry in between the two, uh, the last episode and this one, Microsoft was trading at like 130% of his stock price. And I thought a good idea would be to go ahead and buy him, even though he's overpriced, merge these two together, and then grow negative in order to increase the uh, returns here. But if uh, he's a party to an interest rate swap, and the expansion continues to go on, in this industry, his price will come down. Right? So he's a, he's got a uh, swap, and look at that, the interest rate's up to nine and a quarter. So we're going to make all kinds of money off of those swaps, and uh, we want him to start losing money to us, so that when we want to buy him, he's less expensive. Okay, so that's all we're going to do for real networks. Nortel is next. Here, we're reasonably competent in spending 12%. Our income is down a little bit. Down a little bit. Let's take a look at our cash situation. We have little to no cash. We're trading at a huge premium. We're growing way too much. Look at these negatives. All right, so we need to lower our growth rate to 1%. Uh, we can lower our R&D to 5%. And let's kill the dividend. And once we have our cash reserve built back up again, we can, we can uh, give ourselves a dividend. But until then, we need Huawei Networks to use up all of his cash and credit. Start going deeper into debt. Same thing with Qualcomm. Might even make sense to sell Nortel off right now and then buy him back when he's cheaper. Let's see, Nortel. Make three and a half times our money selling him. I think that's what we'll do. I think we'll go ahead and sell him. He's, his price is going to come down because the conditions there are just awful. He doesn't have any other investments that will that will prop up his stock price. Oh, crap. I forgot about the fact that we own 51%. Um, shoot. I just gave away a bunch of value. Toyota America. This is probably going to have to be the last one because we're running out of time. His income is uh, down. He's rated to hold. He's very capable. Uh, he's got enough money to pay off his debt. Growing at 16% despite negative demand. And all these guys have credit, so they're growing like crazy. So let's lower our dividend to 40 cents. Let's change our growth rate to 1%. And we're very capable, so the R&D is fine. 
Okay. So when these guys use up their credit again, you know, hopefully they'll lose money on swaps and they'll have to slow down because of it. Okay, so our interest rate is up, which is good, and hopefully it'll stay there because it's still another five or six months before um, we'll start making money on those swaps. The index is down as expected. Raycom's price went up to 3050 and then has backtracked down to where it is now. No idea what's going to happen with that. We'll probably stay at this level to you know between 25 and 30 until the interest rate swaps kick in. But until then, we'll just try to make some money off of oil. If uh, gold goes back down to a thousand, we'll buy it naturally. Silver, we're looking for a price of thirteen dollars to buy it, or twenty twenty. Uh, let's see, twenty. What's what's going to be about twenty four. 24 or above to sell it short. And uh, spot wheat and uh, corn haven't really, really been hitting their, their highs or their lows. Um, I think we need some more time to figure out, you know, just when the best time to buy these is. It's at its lowest point now that it's been in over a year. But uh, I think what I'll do is I'll wait for it to fall below four. This one needs to get down to three to really be worth it. Of course, I don't know if uh, we can buy a lot of contracts on those. I don't know what the upper and lower limits are for the game to consider the price extreme. But we need to figure that stuff out. I mean, we got a lot of stuff that we need to do with our stocks, so we're going to handle that first. And we'll just keep an eye on these and see if we can't figure out what the best thing to do is. So anyway, uh... I know we did a lot of fast forwarding today. Hope you didn't get bored watching that. Um, what we did do was very important, however, and if you're playing games of your own, um, it is tedious to get a lot of these contracts in, but it's really worth it. We're going to go from 72 trillion, probably up to about 300 trillion in the next year. And most of that will happen in like the uh, August to October time frame. And I think at that point, it'll probably level out and stay in the 300 to, to 350 range for the remainder of the year. But anyway, uh, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share. And until next time, this is Raycom saying, have a good one.